Hello friends, this video on principles of inheritance part 47 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Number 10. In cattle, hornless condition is dominant over horned. So hornless condition is denoted by capital P and horned is denoted by small p. A certain hornless bull is bred to three cows. Okay, so a hornless bull. So whenever we want to talk about something which is horned, how do we denote it? We will denote it with small b, small b. So that is the only scenario when it will be horned because it is recessive. And if we talk about hornless, so hornless can be denoted by homozygous condition, capital B, capital P, or it can be heterozygous as well because capital P is dominant over small p. So this is how we will denote things. Now, first of all, the hornless bull was bred with cow A, which is horned. And in that case, a hornless calf was produced. So let us keep doing this. So in the first case, what was done? Cow A was bred with the bull. So what is the bull? Now the cow is horned. So if the cow is horned, that means the cow genotype will be small p, small p. What about the bull? The bull is hornless. So the bull can be capital P, capital P or the bull can be capital P, small p. So anything is possible. Now the result of this was a hornless calf was produced. So basically this was hornless calf was produced. So what would be this hornless calf? Because see, one parent has small p, so definitely this calf is going to have at least one small p. But since it is hornless, that means if the other one is capital P. Because if the other one would have been small p, in that case it would have become horned. Right? So this is going to be the genotype of the hornless calf. Right? So that is the first cross. The second cross was with cow B, which was also horned. So now cow B, which is again horned, that is also crossed with the same bull. And again, a horned calf is produced. So in this case, a horned calf is produced. So cow B was horned. So that is cow B was again small b, small p. And the bull again could be anything. And the result was a horned calf. So horned calf would again be small p, small p. Now if the result is small p, small p, so what can the bull be? So in this case again the bull can be, as I said, bull we are not sure whether it is going to be capital P, capital P or capital P, small p. Right? And in the third scenario, the cow C is bred with the same bull. And cow C is again hornless. So now when the cow C is hornless, the cow C can be capital P small p or it can be capital P capital P and in this case the result was a hornless calf. So this hornless calf again could be, I'm sorry here in this case a horned calf is produced. So horned calf is again small p small p. So that means this is getting small p from both the parents. So this shows that these two parents cannot be capital P capital P. Because if both are capital P in that case it is cannot be a small p. So in that case this means that this is heterozygous. So cow C is going to be heterozygous and bull is also going to be heterozygous. And if the bull is heterozygous. In that case, if you see here also, your condition is satisfied. If the bull is heterozygous, in that case, you also get an opportunity, you get a condition where small p and small p will meet. Because if it is capital P, capital P, you really do not get a small p, small p. So in that this case, this condition cannot happen. Therefore, the bull satisfies these two conditions and also if the bull is capital P, small p, this is also true. Anyways, this option you can get even with capital P, capital P. But since the bull doesn't satisfy the condition for capital P, capital P in case 2 and case 3, therefore, what do we uh, conclude? We conclude that the genotype for the bull would be capital P, small p. For cow A, it would be small p, small p. For cow B, it will be small p, small p. And for cow C, it will be capital P, small p. So this would be the final genotypes of the four parents. Let us look at the last question. The last question. It says a spotted rabbit when mated with a solid colored rabbit produced all spotted offsprings. When these F1 rabbits were crossed among themselves, they produced 23 spotted and 8 colored rabbits. Okay. 
which of these characters is a dominant trait now this is very obvious in the f1 generation the trait which is getting expressed that is going to be the dominant character so if you see in the f1 generation it produced all spotted offsprings so that means the spotted trait is the dominant trait so therefore we will denote spotted trait with a capital s and which is the other trait that is the solid trait and the solid trait will be denoted with a small s make a cross also to show f1 and f2 generations okay so let us try to do that so let us see so from here we will start so what is the parental generation so in the parental generation a spotted rabbit that is capital s capital s is crossed with a solid colored rabbit that is small s small s so what was produced it produced capital s small s so these are heterozygous but phenotype wise they are all spotted so this was the f1 generation right so the f1 generation is being produced now we will have to find out the f2 generation so what else do we need to calculate? We also need to see about how many of these 23 spotted rabbits in F2 generation would be homozygous. So how many of them are going to be homozygous and how many of the solid colored rabbits would be homozygous. So we have to find out from the F2 output that how many of the solid colored and how many of the spotted rabbits will be homozygous. So let us first try to find out the F2 output. So what do we do for the F2 cross? We just cross the heterozygous rabbits amongst themselves. That is capital S small s crossed with capital S small s. So the possible gametes here would be capital S small s. Here it would be capital S small s. So what are the possible combinations out of these? This would be the possible combinations where we have capital S capital S, capital S small s, capital S small s and then small s small s. So what is this? This is going to be the spotted rabbit so this is the f2 generation what about this this is also going to be the spotted because capital s is dominant over small s and what is this this is going to be the solid rabbit so what do we see the result of f2 generation is that three fourth of the output are spotted and only one fourth of the output or the one fourth of the out offsprings possibility is that that they will be solid. So this three fourth or one fourth just tells about the possibility. So the possibility is that just one fourth of it, there is one fourth possibility that solid rabbits would be produced and there is a three fourth of possibility that spotted rabbits will be produced. Right now in the third question it asks that out of the 23 spotted rabbits how many of them are homozygous so here we saw that what is the total number of uh, spotted rabbits here three so out of this three how many are homozygous one right so we saw that one third of the spotted rabbits are homozygous right so in the question it says that the total number of spotted rabbits is 23 so as per question there are 23 spotted rabbits so how many of them would be homozygous one third of 23 right and one third of 23 is approximately eight rabbits so we can say that eight rabbits out of the 23 rabbits would be homozygous similarly the question asks how many of the solid rabbits would be homozygous? So here if you see all solid rabbits will be homozygous because for a rabbit to be solid, it has to be homozygous because solid is the recessive trait. So we can say that all solid rabbits would be, all solid rabbits, solid colored rabbits rather would be homozygous. So in the question it says that there are total eight solid rabbits, therefore eight solid rabbits would be homozygous. So I hope that you got an idea about how to approach questions and how to solve them in genetics. So with this we have reached towards the end of this lesson and I hope that this lesson on principles of inheritance where we have discussed about Mendelian's rules and we also discussed about the Morgan's experiments and the concept of linkage and genetic maps and a concept is very very important as far as genetics is concerned in the next few lessons we will discuss more things about genetics so see you all in the next lesson thank you please visit www.examclear.com to watch more videos 
attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.